about stuff here today. We have a guest during the first hour. Uh, we're going to talk about war. Is it ever justified? Did we have one of those justified wars recently? Are we uh, cleaning up the aftermath of one or uh, that was justified, or, do we, or did we blow it? Um, is there a way to th- organize our thoughts about trying to figure out these things? Uh, we're going to talk with a fellow who has spent a great deal of time thinking about it. Dr. Greg Bonson is going to be on the line here in just a moment talking about uh, at least a Christian view of war. Is there such a thing? Does anybody give a rip? Um, is there a, such a thing as a theology of war? I know we've had a lot of God talk this week, um, but we're, we're, we're honoring the, uh, the Congress of the United States is honoring, as you just heard on uh, ABC News just a few moments ago, Storm and Norman for his successful waging of war in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, let's stop and think about this question here for a second. We intervened in Panama. Did we make anything any better over there? Did we intervened in Vietnam. Did we really make it any better over there? We've just finished or are in the process of continuing to intervene in Iraq in Kuwait, did we really make it any better over there? Uh, we have to think about these things uh, if we are to figure out uh, what we're going to do in the future when these issues arise. Uh, later, we're going to talk with Dave Stanley from Iowans for Tax Relief. He says uh, the state, uh, the, the legislature of the state of Iowa is about ready to expire, and it hasn't dealt with uh, the taxpayers fairly. We're going to talk about that for a while, and then we'll have some open topic time during the next hour. Well... Is war ever justified? Dr. Greg Bonson is here. How shall we describe you, Dr. Bonson? Well, I'm a minister of the gospel, Presbyterian by denomination, and currently scholar in residence at the Southern California Center for Christian Studies, where we do a lot of work in publishing and uh, lecturing and debating. Okay. Debating in, uh, on, on what kinds of things? Well, we... Um, we debate the question of God's existence and the truth of the Christian faith. We debate ethical issues, um, uh, Christians' involvement in the world, socio-political matters. And so both in apologetics and in ethics, uh, we try to defend the Christian worldview and show its, uh, its advantages and superiority to its alternatives. If I were to ask you the question just this way, in fact, I'm going to, well, was the most recent war in the Middle East justified? Was Operation Just Cause... Indeed, a just cause. Well, obviously, when you ask the question looking for a yes or no answer, and there has to be a yes or no answer, because I don't think we live in a world of relativism, but it's it's going to be subject to misunderstanding if there isn't something uh, by way of a lead-in explanation of what a just war is and then how that would be applied. Is, to the is there situation. such a thing? I believe there is such a thing as a just war. From the standpoint of biblical revelation, um, Though we know war stems from the sinful desires of men, and therefore war is always a spiritual failure uh, for us uh, as human beings, nevertheless, uh, in a fallen world where we have to deal with that uh, sinful nature of man, there are going to be occasions where war is the appropriate response to aggression. So you're not a pacifist? Not at all. I think that uh, though the ideals of the pacifist are correct ideals, and the things that we as Christians should be striving for, we will not accomplish that by simply laying down our arms and pretending the world isn't a fallen place with aggressive individuals that will violently take advantage of the innocent. Saddam Hussein took advantage, I don't know about the innocent, uh, but he took advantage certainly of uh, the Kuwaitis. He's a Hitler-esque figure capable of all kinds of atrocities. Certainly, uh, you, you, you must agree that uh, bringing a, a, a tyrannical, lawless individual like him to, to bay is a noble cause, right? Well, he's been described as the butcher of Baghdad, and though there's uh, obviously rhetorical force to that, I think there's moral force to it as well. He is a man that uh, deserves to be uh, driven from power and to be uh, brought to justice for his crimes against his own people and and other peoples of the world as well. So I guess there's then the no answer... question about yeah. him being yeah. an evil man, that, yeah. and there's no question about it being good that he be brought down. The real question is, what is the just and morally appropriate way for that to take place? All right. Uh, I'll bite. <laughs> 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 what, what is the, the just and moral way to, to bring his regime to an end? Okay, well, the question... Uh, because we asked whether this was a just war, meaning was it just for us as the United States to intervene, the real question is going to become, has God granted to us, the United States of America, the right to police the world? 
as wrong as Saddam Hussein is, and as ideal as it would be for him to be driven from power, the real question is whether we have been authorized by God to expend the lives and money, property of our citizens in order to accomplish that noble end. Um, and I don't believe that the Bible warrants that kind of thinking for not only the United States, but for any other nation of the world. Um, the problems of the Middle East have got to be taken care of in the Middle East. Our intervention, I'm afraid, betrays something of a messianic complex and way of thinking for us as Americans that you know, we've got the right answers and therefore we have the right to go anywhere in the world and to impose those answers. Now that isn't to say that I disagree with, uh, with the goal of having this man uh, driven from power, but I, cer I certainly disagree with the idea that, that our children and our money should be used to do that. Well, well. What about uh, you know these guys? Uh, maybe in the uh, the way the Bible discusses. Well, these guys are our neighbors, right? We're supposed to uh, take care of our neighbors. We're supposed to love our neighbors, right? Uh, wrong. Uh, that that is an analogy which is inappropriate. We um, we are to take care of our neighbors. The Bible teaches that. But it would be a grave mistake to transfer what the Bible teaches about interpersonal relations to international relations. Uh, to treat nations as neighbors with one another in the same way that your next-door neighbor and you are neighbors would be not only a monumental conceptual mistake, but it will lead to ethical mischief all over the place. It's also the true, it's all, it, husbands and wives are supposed to love each other and to have sexual relations with each other, but no one in their right mind tries to transfer that analogy to international affairs. Uh, Jesus told us that when we're dealing with individuals and uh, we can avoid provocation and walk away from a fight, that we're obligated to do that. We're to turn the other cheek. He was not giving instructions for international relations when he said that. So it is true that we are to take care of our neighbors, you know, person on person, but uh, there is no instruction in the Bible that says that we are, as a nation, obligated to uh, expend human life, uh, to spill human blood, to uh, spend the money and resources of a nation to take care of the internal affairs or even the external affairs of another nation. All right, hang on to this. Dr. Greg Bonson is here. He is a theologian who is trying to help us think about uh, the nature of war. When is and if it is a just cause, when is it appropriate to intervene? Uh, he's not a pacifist. Yeah, but he's taken us in directions that maybe you didn't expect to. So, geez, we're trying to figure all this out. Plus, if you'd like to join the conversation, here's where at 284-1040. It's 21 after 9 and 1040 WHO Radio. Michelson here with you as Dr. Greg Bonson is here, and he is a theologian who is uh, uh, talking about war. Whether Under what circumstances is war justified? Uh, a brief question, uh, Doc, before we go to our uh, phone callers, Okay. You were saying, well, yeah, well, all right, we can't use the, the rules uh, that were given for interpersonal relationships to extend them to international relations. That's a mistake. That's right. All right, how about this, then? The United States signed a treaty with the United Nations, which uh, it, it sort of obligates us to, uh, to use the United Nations as a legitimate international force for, for peace. And everybody acknowledges, well, that's a, that's a noble cause. And you said earlier that peace is a noble cause. Yeah. All right. We agreed, and the United Nations voted to use force over there and to, to uh, get the Iraqis out of Kuwait and authorize the United States to go to war. Our own elected representatives uh, of the United States uh, uh, tacitly accepted that jurisdiction when it uh, agreed to ratify that U.N. vote. Therefore, uh, we're, we're dealing with this issue through rule of law, through our elected representatives for the cause of peace. That validated our jurisdiction, that uh, put the good seal of housekeeping on our, on our tactics. Uh, we won. We can now go uh, right off into the sunset, patting ourselves on the back and giving a national award to Storm and Norman in the, in the joint session of Congress. Well, obviously, Jan, there are going to be some uh, uh, people that have trouble believing that uh, anything the United Nations does is automatically morally acceptable. I find it more than just a little bit ironic that many of the socio-political conservatives in this country 
who have for years railed upon the United Nations for its liberalism and for its interventionism and for principles that they don't agree with, are now all of a sudden willing to use appeal to the United Nations to sanction what they wanted to do in Iraq. When we as the United States intervened in Panama and the United Nations condemned that, we thumbed our nose at the United Nations and said, too bad, we believe that it was morally right and we did it. Now that we have the United Nations behind us in this particular uh, skirmish in Iraq, then we're very happy to appeal to that as our moral justification. And so what happens here, if you're going to be honest, you see as an ethicist, you have to look at that kind of thing and say, hasn't the United Nations become something of a taxi 